Good morning. Thank you for uh, welcome to the third day of DevConf. Um, my name is Imogen Flood Murphy, and today we're going to be talking to you about better inclusion is a bigger piece of Gregal for everyone. We will talk about the loop, uh, diversity, inclusion, agile, resiliency, neurodiversity, um, and much more. As you can hopefully see, there are three presenters today. Um, my name, as I've already said, is Imogen Club Murphy. I'm a manager within Red Hat's customer experience and engagement team. I also lead the DNI advisory group in Deno, and I will be moderating today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, ask them in the chat, and we will try to get to them as we speak. Sarah? Thanks, Imogen. Um, my name is Sarah Finn, um, and I'm a senior agile practitioner um, at Red Hat. And I'm currently working with um, the CPE team, so the Community Platform Engineering team, who are at the forefront of support for CentOS and Fedora communities. Um, and I also support the Agile and DevOps um, community of practice within Red Hat as well. So creating space uh, to allow um, reps from, from teams across Red Hat to come to um, our, our sinks to practice some techniques and tools uh, to help their teams. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today, and I'm going to speak about um, inclusion in relation to agility and resilience. Over to you, Aliska. Hello, everyone. My name is Aliska Manikova. I work as a project manager at Red Hat Check. I'm located in Brno. I'm passionate about DNI and uh, most of all about neurodiversity. So I am representative for neurodiversity community for my location, and recently I'm also a student of psychology and management too. Uh, feel free to reach to me every time. Uh, you can see my email address here, or we can chat if some time remains after after this talk. Thank you. So here's the agenda, um, what we're going to be talking about today, starting by introducing the topic of inclusion, then moving on to neurodiversity, the agile mindset and resilience, and finally, so, um, psychological safety and the business value of all of this. And before we dive into neurodiversity, resilience, agile, and other terms, let's start with a little reminder of what inclusivity is. What does inclusivity actually look like? What does inclusion actually look like? Inclusion is embracing differences in people and perspectives so that we can all use our individual strengths to contribute our best. It's inviting everyone to bring their authentic selves to work every day, treating each other fairly and respectfully, and recognizing that we all have something uniquely valuable to offer. The definition that we actually use for inclusion is inclusion is um, embracing differences in people and perspectives so that we can all use our individual strengths to contribute our best. In regards to agility, inclusion is a vital component to the overall success of a project be it within our everyday life, homeschool, homeschooling, or work life, delivering a valuable product. Looking at our resilience, inclusion of others to support ourselves and build connections is key. Yeah, uh, let me describe and explain a bit this, this picture. Uh, you can see a few circles demonstrating the differences between inclusion, exclusion, segregation, integration. We have a variety of colorful dots uh, to see the differences here, yeah, to demonstrate the differences here. So exclusion on a, on a left down shows how it could look in exclusive environment. All dots that are not the same green color are excluded, are not uh, part of the circle, are, are outside of it, around. Yeah, uh, segregation, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Segregation, uh, look at the middle picture. There are two circles, one main with only green dots and one small circle full of full of colors. So it's being separated uh, from each other. Yeah, this is great. This guy really like um, this illustration here, the differences between each. Um, just looking at this, what is the difference between inclusion and integration? 
Um, well, integration, it is pictured here as two closed circles. Small colorful circle is a uh, part of big circle, but not really a part. It is in there, but it's still kind of kind of separated, right? So inclusion at the top of the picture shows all colorful dots uh, together in, in, in one circle, cooperating, uh, being together, um, dots of whatever color in one circle to the difference. Uh, so the difference is that the inclusion truly is a mix. It's, it's cooperating together. Yeah. Integrated work workplace is, um, is a setting where neuroatypical work alongside neurotypical or uh, whatever diversity we are talking about. Yeah. Everyone ha uh, is held to a standard set of working. Yeah. Inclusion is the actual merging of, of all of it, of the, needs with the belief that all people are different will learn differently and should have access to resources so the workplace expectations are adjusted so that everyone has their needs met and everyone can do their best okay that makes sense um, and it's a really good distinction between the two i wonder by integrating uh, in an organization by integrating do we feel um, do we feel like we're actually practicing inclusion, uh, whether we, we might not be, but not know it? Oh, oh yeah, we are. <laughs> and uh, you're right, yeah, we have some space for a few further steps, that's for sure. Okay, um, next slide, please. Before I, I speak about neurodiversity and explain this term, uh, let me please refresh and explain the word diversity. Uh, as we touched by the, the inclusion here. I believe that most of us heard this word very many times. Diversity can be defined as the range of uh, human differences that create our individual and uh, shared experiences. And when we talk about diversity, we usually uh, tend to think about uh, gender, national origin, ethnicity, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. All of it, it definitely belongs under it, but diversity spans many more uh, dimensions. Imo will talk about those in a moment. Um, physical and mental ability or attributes. So neurodiversity, all of it belongs to the list and, and much more for sure. Uh, so uh, neurodiversity, next slide please. Neurodiversity is the concept that the neurological differences between people should be respected and recognized. So it basically is one of the diversity perspective, as I already mentioned, only focus on the fact that each mind is different. Yeah. And instead of using terms with this, like dysfunction, disabilities, disorders, this term neurodiversity is enabling. It takes into account um the neurological differences it's not one size fits all we're all different and neurodiversity celebrates the difference yeah um it just refers to variation in the human brain regarding social ability social ability uh learning attention mood and other mental function uh next slide not uh, all minds are created equal and that's okay maybe a little example would help with the perspective on neurodiversity so few names of famous persons with some diagnosis for example bill bill gates uh, has autism john chambers so uh, who's a former cisco ceo has adhd and the list could surely continue so why would neurodiversity matter yeah for, for that reason that not all minds are created equal right and uh the chemical balance in my brain is unique to me as yours is unique to you. More neurodiverse persons are, are cited with having uh, higher levels of creativity and different capabilities than others who are neurotypical. Yeah, for example, dyslexia, autism and ADHD all result in the ability to see connections uh, others cannot. Yeah, so this person can create a, a narrative that helps to simplify complex projects or tasks. And uh, it's not only the condition we were born with, it could include also situations happening around us, like the recent situation with the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic, for example, it affects us all a lot. And uh, it could affect or challenge our mental health. 
some of us might recently experience the world more like a neurodiverse person. So given the, given the recent situation now more than ever, we, we need to innovate and we need more allies. Yeah. More, more understanding and educated people in this area, just uh, the creative and diverse uh, minds. Um, I would like to also mention that neurodiversity is the idea that the neurological differences like autism, ADHD, and uh, are the result of, of of normal natural variation in the human human genome. Yeah. Um, what else? Neurodiversity covers um, in addition to addressing what makes us uh, unique. Neurodiversity also addresses how we take care of ourselves. So. Uh, based on these factors, so these, these are also known like uh, mental health or mental mental wellness. Uh, now, when I talk about what neurodiversity is, let me uh, please let me tell you what neurodiversity is not. Uh, it's a very important part to know. It helps us understand this even better. So this is not a perspective. It's uh, not an approach. It's not a belief or a political position or a paradigm. Neurodiversity is a biological fact. I think that's another great uh, distinction there. Um, Aliska, so definitely thanks so much for sharing that. Um, that it's not, as you said, a perspective um, or a belief, that it's part of our makeup, that it's our biological fact. Thanks for that. So um, we just want to talk a little bit about what diversity is. There are different levels of diversity. I won't list everything that's written here. However, they are linked to identity, such as age. For example, thinking someone is too, too young to know something or too old to keep up with the latest trends. It could be upbringing, your native language. Having, not having English as your native language will impact you and your ability to um, interact. Um, socioeconomic group. What financial resources did you have access to as a child or now? Um, organizational. Where are you based within your organization? What job do you do? How long have you been in your role? The company culture will also impact um, on the business outcomes that are listed here, such as a better understanding of our customers, creative leadership, a diverse workforce and important for every company, a strong financial performance. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I would like to mention the best companies have realized neurodiversity is a competitive advantage like HPE, uh, SAP, IBM or, or Microsoft, just for example. So there are surely much more of companies focusing that way already. And uh, it's just not about only the hiring initiative. Managers and associates needs to be equipped to collaborate with and lead in a way that is psychologically safe for people who who see the world or experience the world differently. Okay, thanks for that, Aliska. So let's jump in um, to the world of agility. Um, agility is the ability to adapt and respond to change quickly. We practice agility naturally every day by adapting to our changing environments. You might wake up one morning after a great night's sleep and are ready to take on your ever growing to do list. But to discover that you're out of coffee, what would you do? You naturally practice agility and adapt in that moment. You may decide to try and manage without coffee for the morning and drink tea. But let's face it, that to do list is going to be a little bit harder to tackle. Or you might decide to nip to the shops, resulting in you maybe have to deprioritize an item on that to-do list or move it to the next day. Having the ability to adapt and make the choices with the information we have comes naturally to us. And we always gain an opportunity to chalk down some lessons learned. So for example, doubling up on your coffee intake or your coffee uh, shop during the week or building some wiggle room into your daily plans. So 2020 and 2021 has had us practicing agility on another level. This could be from building in time into your day for homeschooling or checking in on family members to ensure that they are minding themselves and minding their health. We manage better when we include others in our plans. 
So reaching out maybe to a teacher for further insight into that maths problem that you might be having with your son or daughter, or reaching out to siblings to help with the load of caring for your parents. We can have a greater impact together and even have some fun in the process. Aliska and Imo, I'd be really interested to hear how have you had to adapt uh, throughout the last year or so? Uh, well, I guess we all learned a lesson about that during 2020 and still ongoing. Uh, it was a year that challenged me quite a bit and uh, made me realize how lucky I am in some areas. Yeah, for example, I was able to keep working from home that's that's great and also i had the option to adjust my living space for for my hobby uh, we built a pretty decent gym uh in the in the garage to keep exercising so for me um i would usually travel back to the uk every couple of months i live here in the in the czech republic but with covid that just wasn't possible not without spending weeks on end in quarantine so I needed to find ways to recharge my batteries without traveling home to see my friends and family in London. Okay, that's, that's great, you know, to, to hear how you had to um, ad adapt in, in, in the moment and, and to find ways of building in exercise um, at home and, and connecting with people differently. And um, so thanks so much for, for sharing that. Okay, so let's take a deeper look into um, agility um, in the world of work. When we refer to agility at work, we refer to it as agile. You may be familiar with the term agile, or maybe if not familiar with the term agile, definitely probably with, with the terms uh, Scrum and Kanban, which are agile frameworks. This is simply bringing the ability to practice agility into the workplace. So allowing us to quickly um, adapt and change based on the information that we have at hand. Agile frameworks, practices and tools are built around this and recognizes the importance of information to deliver a valuable product or service to our, to our users. These frameworks, tools and practices enable us to collaborate, communicate and gain feedback to fuel continuous improvement. There has been a recent shift um, over the last couple of years in organizations to spend just as much time supporting teams to embrace the agile mindset as it is to encourage them to experiment with using some frameworks and tools. So what we're trying to do is to tap into the right side of the brain, so our emotional and social side, they recognize that for us to change our ways of working, to be more inclusive and collaborative, we need a lot more than just frameworks and processes. We need to spend time training our minds to be more open, curious, trusting, and courageous to ensure our processes and frameworks are effective. So combining an agile mindset with these frameworks results in sharing information and collaborating together on new ideas to deliver the best value to the market and our communities. So we know the frameworks, we know the tools, the practices, but how do we suddenly start being agile? It's not as easy as following steps in a framework. It is a complete mindset, mindset shift that may take us a little bit out of our comfort zone. Building on our resilience can really help support you on this journey. So let's look at resilience. Resilience is the ability to adapt openly in the face of adversity and change. A Greek philosopher once said, change is the only constant in life. And how true he was, change will happen. And in our world today, it's changing at a much faster pace. Constant change is the norm. A lot of the time, we have very little control over that change. But what we can try and manage a little bit better is how we react to change and adversity not trying to control and stop the change, but becoming more open to explore the opportunities it may bring. Yeah, uh, uh, Sarah, would you please help me understand better why the word uh, positively is crossed out? Yeah, no problem, Aniska. Um, so I've crossed that out um, and swapped in the, the term openly here. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure on people uh, when change is on the horizon or asked to do or work um, in a different way or try out um, a new way of working.
there could be pressure on us to um, uh, accept that change and as positively as, as we can. And we do try to do that. But I think it creates a barrier and it breaks down the reality of the actual situation that it can be a little bit unnerving, a little bit unsettling uh, to try new things. So I think a more um, a better term here is just to embrace it a little bit more openly, be a little bit more curious and inquisitive instead of positively. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I agree. I was asking about it because my thinking is that sometimes we just insist too much on, on positivity, like being positive, optimistic. It actually uh, could cause more harm than good, I think, being ourselves and looking for brighter sides. Yes, but staying optimistic and positive all the time doesn't really seem to me like a healthy perspective or, or sometimes even an option. Absolutely. No problem. And sometimes it can actually be a barrier to change when we're told we need to react to it positively as well. So thanks for sharing that, Aliska. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, next slide. So to truly adopt an agile mindset, we need to build in our resilience, to be ready for change, to be inclusive and to seek out the opportunity. Yeah, I really like that you mentioned the opportunity that awaits. Yeah, because with change, you know, comes opportunity. So it's it's trying to to focus um a little bit more on like again, if if is the term opportunity, like what can it bring? Who else can I work with? What can I learn? Um, what can I um help out with? And and things like that, and and trying to embrace the excitement even of 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 change. Next slide. So let's look at resilience here and, and how we can um, spend time on, on building that to allow us to adapt a little bit better and become more open to change. So like building a muscle, increasing your resilience takes time and effort and it will look different for everyone. So I won't um, wake up today and say, today I'm going to be resilient and my mindset is going to change like that um, and that's it. No, it, 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 unfortunately not. We need to work on, on what that means to us. So it might mean um, that I ensure I'm taking plenty of breaks throughout my day to allow me to decompress um, and, and digest, build in some, some exercise, build in time to get out, um, out for fresh air. And especially um, with COVID-19, we've been really restricted in, in what we can do there to to help us decompress and, and to unwind. Uh, so we've had to become very creative in, in that. Um, and it will look different for everyone. So for somebody, it might be uh, that they have a morning yoga session uh, that sets them up for the day um, and they listen to a meditation at night to unwind. Or for somebody else, it might be going for a walk um, during lunchtime um, and connecting uh, with others, you know, through box sets of, of Netflix and, and things that they're watching as well. So it's really just trying to find what works for you and ensuring that you're spending enough time um, on, on, on prioritizing that uh, to support yourself um, in it. So next slide. So these are the four cornerstones um, of building your resilience. First is to uh, build your connections. So to ensure that you're reaching out to people. As I said earlier, working together um, is much better. It creates a connection um, and we could actually have fun as well, even when we're working, you know, to be able to, to reach out to your colleagues and to obviously, you know, uh, work together on, on valuable pieces um, of work but to um, enjoy that and get to know each other um, as, as, um, as, as much as you can. And uh, so you could do that, you know, to have a social sessions with them, maybe um, pub quizzes, maybe have a celebration uh, cause each quarter, whatever that might be. And also connecting with family members as well. Um, definitely ensure that you're building that in. Feed yourself healthy thoughts. So again, it's been quite challenging last year and this year. Um, being uh, confined, uh, that sometimes we can spend a little bit too much time in our minds. Um, and we might feel if we're juggling a lot at home, we're juggling maybe looking after parents, maybe um, homeschooling, um, whatever that might be, as well as our work, um, we, we might be self-doubt, have a little bit of self-doubt around things. So ensure that you're feeding yourself healthy thoughts, knowing that you're doing really well in the situation that you're in and that what you can do every day is good enough. 
You're brilliant. I second to that. Just to mention the building, the resilience could be different for everyone, as you already said, neurotypical or neuroatypical, but it makes us no less uh, valuable. That's it. Exactly. Um, and key as well is to have a purpose. So to know your why and to strive towards that every day. It doesn't necessarily need to be work related. It can absolutely be on a personal level as well. But build in small little goals that you feel you're achieving each day or each week um, to, to, to kind of help you on that journey. And last but definitely not least is, is wellness. So to ensure that you're minding your body and your mind. So as we all know, ensuring we're having water, healthy food, obviously the odd little treat now and again, but ensure we're getting enough sleep, um, exercise, um, and just minding ourselves in, in, in general and trying to prioritize our, our general um, well-being will, will support you on your resilience journey. So now I'm gonna hand you over to Emo, who is gonna to chat to you about how you can be more inclusive. And of course, I forgot to unmute. Um... So there are many ways to be more inclusive, including creating opportunities for people to share and contribute, um, valuing your contribution as well as that of others, um, making sure that they are aware um, that you value that contribution, being accepting of your own strengths and weaknesses um, and knowing when to ask for help. Um, it is often especially difficult uh, to ask for help. I think engineers have this built in thing that we must fix this, we must know how to resolve this, and so we're less likely to ask for help. Viewing challenges and disagreements as opportunities to learn. Um, you know, every it's just a different point of view. Um, and if you can learn from that, you will grow as a person um, as a result. Acknowledging that change is constant, um, as Sarah already mentioned, uh, it's the only thing that stays the same. Um, and looking for those opportunities to uh, grow. Listen more. Listen to your teams, listen to the people who perhaps don't often speak up. Um, just listen and listen to yourself. If you're tired, go to bed, be kind to yourself. Actively advocate for inclusion. Um, if you know that there is somebody who is a little more quiet in meetings um, or in your friendship group, ask their opinion um, and do it in a way that is that works for them. Um, so if you know they don't want to speak up in front of 10 people, ask them on a one to one. Um, and last but by no means least, um, instill psychological safety. Um, make sure that the area is safe for people to to speak up and Alishka is going to talk us through what psychological safety is. Yeah, thank you, Imo. It was really nicely said, all of it. So uh, psychological safety, the cornerstone. Um, psychological safety can be defined as uh, being able to show and employ oneself without a fear of, uh, of uh, negative consequences of self-image status, uh, career, it can be defined as, uh, as, as a shared belief that the team or the environment is safe for interpersonal risk taking. Yeah, in a psychologically safe teams, uh, team members feel accepted and respected. So they feel like they can express themselves, disagree, say no, be authentic, even make a mistake. Yeah. And um, good news, it's within our control. So individual contribution matter very, very much. Your attitude can change a lot. As Emma mentioned in her previous slide, value contribution of others, for, for example, for, for just for example. Um, there are a few good questions we can uh, ask ourselves within our teams, groups, or communities, whatever environment we would like to apply it at. So do people feel comfortable saying no? Uh, can meetings be declined or rescheduled without fear? Um, these are just an example of the questions we can ask our ourselves. A uh, big part of psychological safety is to show vulnerability or fallibility. Uh, openly, ask, uh, on, uh, openly ask for feedback on how you deliver. Gracefully admit when you're wrong. 
or, or just admit when you are wrong, right? Uh, we ourselves can be the leading example and model behaviors we would like to see by assuming a good intent. So in addition to that, let's not jump to conclusion or, and blaming, but ask, uh, ask a few more questions first. Uh, being said, replace blame with, uh, with uh, curiosity. E engage in exploration together to find a, find a solution. And uh, please remember, uh, safety looks different for everyone. And uh, in light of COVID-19, as we touched it, a uh, few times here and restrictions related to the situation more people people than than ever uh, before might be experiencing life as a neurodiverse individual and the stigma and lack uh, of safety may prevent them from seeking help yeah so i would like to encourage you to be open-minded and look out for each other despite most of us work from home um, rethink the way we work so that it is safer and more productive for all the all the team members, whether biologically neurodiverse or just temporarily coping. And also, these neurodiverse persons may be uh, may be your peers, yeah, maybe your direct reports or your manager, and you never never know. Uh, you, you might never know it, especially if they if they don't feel safe sharing, yeah. So. Uh, one more thing, uh, statistics shows some interesting numbers, like one in four people will report a mental condition in their lifetime. So it's not really that small number, right? Um, just one, one, one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why psycho psychological safety is, uh, is important. Sarah? Uh, thanks for that, Aliska. Um, really important points um, on psychological safety there, and especially around the vulnerability. So if you get more leadership and senior leadership teams um, and managers asking more questions and showing their vulnerability, hopefully that will ensure others uh, will, will feel safe doing so as well. So let's look at what business value can um, inclusion deliver. So when we include others um, into our conversations, um, it can limit uh, groupthink. So it creates an opportunity for us to learn and from a range of workplace skills. And obviously then that was going to transpire into um, more valuable conversations and more innov innovative uh, ways of, uh, of working and even our, on our solutions. When we recognize that our contribution is value and considered, we also actively engage a little bit more. So if um, we see uh, uh, people actually listening and actioning some of uh, what we're suggesting. We're going to keep suggesting things. We're going to um, push the boat out and, and try new things. Um, so it's ensure that ensure that we keep that in place um, and inclusion really helps that. Yeah, uh, companies are embracing diversity of identities as Imo described to you previously. Uh, neurodiverse employees, for example, bring unique experience and skill sets to your environment. So neurodiverse individuals are and uh, could be an untapped pool of talent. And with uh, just an example, 80% of autistic people in Ireland are being unemployed, but there is a huge resource uh, to help fill the skills shortage gap, especially in uh, in IT or or finance sectors. Yeah, so neurodiverse companies have been proven to outthink and outperform some heterogeneous spaces. And uh, one more thing to add, people with dyslexia often have um, uh, average or above average intelligence with excellent creative thinking skills. So they tend to have strong problem solving capabilities. This allows them to see see variety of, uh, of solutions to the problem. Or, or people with autism tend to excel in areas like a rule, rule-based, rule-based thinking. Uh, so many organiza organizations uh, are are experiencing the benefits from including individuals with these strengths. And and I just touched this, but uh, yeah, definitely limit limit the group think. Yeah, but by working with the diverse team, employees have people in that groups have more opportunity to learn from uh, from a range of of workplace skills. Absolutely, Liska, they're really, really great points there. Um, so yeah, just touching base on, on some others. Um, so the we have innovation and exploration. So SOAR's barriers to contribution are removed. So as I said that previously, 
um, we start thinking outside the box and exploring a little bit more what, what we can do. Um, the, uh, the group feel more um, empowered, the organisation and teams feel more empowered as an open culture and a happier workforce. And they, they take pride in the collaborative effort to deliver a valuable quality product or service. So they feel proud in their contribution and what the end, um, what the end product is. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so we are coming to the end of our time um, and it is up to me to recap what we've spoken about today. Um, neurodiversity, that it's part of diversity and inclusion. Um, psychological safety is particularly important um, for neurodiverse individuals, as it really is for everybody. Um, and it's often hidden. It's often not immediately visible. Um, you don't necessarily know if your colleague or your manager or your boss's boss's boss um, has neurodiverse issues. Agility, which is all about communication and collaboration and the continuous improvement both in our work and personal lives. Resilience, um, being open to new ideas and support, um, valuing the contribution from others and the importance of connection um, to everybody. Uh, we um, called this talk uh, Better Inclusion Equals a Bigger Piece of Regal for Everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know, who perhaps haven't been to the Czech Republic, Fregal is this uh, sweet Czech pizza kind of thing that is really good. Um, and I recommend everybody uh, the next time that you are here to check this out. Um, I will happily uh, take you for Fregal, as I'm sure will Anishka. Um, yeah, yeah. But the, um, the, the, the main point is that uh, with these tools, with these empowered teams, you end up with a happier workforce, better products and services, and just a better quality of life. In we yeah. have here, Elishka, do you want to? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to jump in and say say what you were about to say. Anyway, here you can see the list of references and some uh, and the resources used for for this presentation for this talk. Uh, but more links and resources are on each slide. Uh, feel free to explore all the mentioned topics further uh, or get in touch. We would be happy to, all of us would be happy to discuss with you any further questions now or later. Thank you. Thank you very much all for uh, your time this morning. We really appreciate you getting up early on a Saturday to listen to us. Um, thank you, Alishka and Sarah, for your insight um, and perspective on this. The slides will be available. We will be sharing them so that you can follow all those links that we just shared with you. And as Alishka mentioned, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any um, questions uh, or just want to touch base on uh, any of the topics that we've discussed today. Um, so I think we have... Um, we are right at the end of our time, um, so unfortunately we won't be able to take any questions. Um, there were a couple in chat and some conversation in the chat that uh, we will be following up on. Um, so thank you everybody for your time, uh, that, was, that was great. <laughs>